Akbar's policies Rajput policy Akbar pursued a policy of alliance with the Rajputs. He embarked on a policy of conciliating and winning over the local rulers. He did not try to reduce the power or authority of the local rulers. Instead, he tried to have friendly alliances based on matrimony. By means of this association, he demanded from them a formal submission, a promise to provide military help when required, and regular tributes to the royal court. He allowed the Rajput rulers of Rajasthan to hold their territories in lieu of such alliances. Akbar adopted a number of liberal measures forbidding soldiers to enslave women and children of rebellious villagers and remitting pilgrim taxes. However, his relations with Rajputs improved particularly after the subjugation of Chittor. Rajput nobles began to enter Mughal administrative services and advanced to highest positions as generals and governors. Raja Todarmal, Raja Birbal and Raja Man Singh were some Rajput chiefs who held high ranks in Akbar's court. Scenes from Akbar's court Akbar holding court at the age of 13 Abul Fazal presenting the Akbar Nama to Akbar Religious Policy Akbar was a far-sighted monarch. He realized that to govern an empire so large, he had to conciliate the people of his empire. He had to be tolerant towards his Hindu subjects. So, he propagated a policy of peaceful coexistence. Thus, the first thing he did on becoming the emperor was to abolish the Jazia in 1564, which was a tax on non-Muslims. He forbade the forceful conversions of the prisoners of war to Islam. Akbar is often seen as a secular monarch as his court was adorned with scholars from different religions. For this, he also got the Ibadat Khana or the Hall of Worship built where scholars of different religions held discourses. Akbar believed in the principle of Suleh e Kul, that is, universal peace. He realized that there were elements of goodness in each religion and essentially each religion aimed at love and harmony. Based on his understanding of various religions, he formulated his own religion called the Dinne Ilahi or the Divine Faith. Very few people accepted it and Akbar did not impose it on anyone. Land Revenue Land was the main source of revenue under the Mughals. Akbar modelled his land revenue system on Sher Shah's system. In this, he was assisted by his able minister, Raja Todarmal. The revenue system introduced by Todarmal came to be known as Bandobast. Land was surveyed and measured with bamboo sticks called jarib joined together with iron rings at the ends. According to the N. Akbari, land was grouped into four categories. Polaj, which was the land always under cultivation, Parauti, land occasionally left fallow to regain fertility, Chachar and Banjar, depending whether it was occasionally or regularly cultivated. Each was further classified into good, middling or bad. The revenue was fixed after assessing the average produce and prices of the last 10 years. The state's share was one-third of the produce, which could be paid either in cash or kind. Loans were extended to the farmers. In case the crops failed due to drought or floods, the government remitted the revenue. The system worked well and the state had an assured supply of revenue. 